we received a warning that inflation would continue to worsen. The Consumer Price Index increased 7.5% over the previous year, according to the most recent inflation figures, which were just a few days ago disclosed. According to experts, this was the highest reading since February of 1982, a pivotal time when the U.S. economy was in free fall. The fact that the monthly increase was 0.06% concerned many economies and put policymakers on the edge basically signified that inflation would not slow down and go away on its own. The issue, however, is much worse than it appears. Official statistics don't always tell us the real story, but we'll soon reveal it to you. Welcome to 360 Economist. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to keep updated with future videos. Given that the inflation rate has altered more than two dozen times through 1980, government statistics isn't exactly reliable. Look beyond what they're telling us if we want to compare the present rate of inflation to previous figures. For instance, according to a recent research by Michael Pento, the inflation rate was negative 0.3% in 2009 and rose to 1.8% by 2019 with a brief rise to 3.2% in 2011. It indicates that current inflation is twice as high as the 10-year average. However, according to John Williams of ShadowStats.com, if we assess the rate of inflation as it was just 10 years ago, the real rate would be close to a startling 15%. The official inflation rate would be greater if calculations were made in the same manner as in 1980. We would have an official rate that is about five times higher than the 10-year average and more than double the official statistic. The government just disclosed if we follow the same methods they previously did. The U.S. CPI is at its highest level in four decades. Higher than expected monthly gains in core CPI signal, ongoing underlying heat, and will do nothing to lessen pressure on the Fed, to tighten rapidly and urgently, said Sim Masha, chief strategist at Principal Global Investors. U.S. customers are maxing out their credit cards to pay for all the suddenly much more expensive requirements as a result of galloping inflation and rising costs. Along with rising household debt, consumer expenditure is also declining quickly as people's purchasing power declines. Health Long, a journalist for the Washington Post, provided some precise figures that illustrate where American consumers are being hurt the most. Used automobile prices have increased by 40.5% in the last year, as have petrol prices nationally and for utilities, and the cost of everyday necessities like pork, fish, eggs, and chicken. Up 14.5%, 13%, 13%, and 10% respectively. When we examine these significant price increases, it is evident that our current inflation rate of 7.5% is impossible. According to their most recent data, energy prices have increased by approximately 30% nationally. During Thursday, electricity is up 10.7%, while natural gas is up 22.6% according to the Labor Department. A gallon of gas now costs an average $3.47, up from $2.47 a year ago due to a 40% increase in price. Our dependence on energy sources with higher extraction costs will increase as a result of the depletion of readily available energy reserves, as we have already covered in previous films. 
The fact that major financial institutions and numerous governments are moving away from conventional energy sources and toward green energy only serves to confuse matters further. Political motives, not environmental ones, are driving this. It is an ambitious strategy with a lot of room for error to try to change how the entire planet is powered up without considering whether these alternative energy sources will be able to supply enough energy to meet the global demand. The energy crisis we are currently experiencing won't soon improve. Rather, things will continue to get worse. We are headed for a time of exorbitant energy prices and severe power shortages. The president stated that this problem is improving last week and pledged to work harder than the devil to lower petrol costs. While today serves as a reminder that Americans' budgets are being squeezed in ways that actually cause stress at the dinner table. We have been using every instrument at our disposal. The combination of higher food and housing prices, in Andrew Hunter's opinion, emphasizes the idea that a rapid cyclical acceleration in inflation is underway. And given how tight the labor market is right now, it is unlikely to slow down anytime soon. Hunter is a senior U.S. economist at Capital Economics. Between what our leaders have been telling us and what economists, analysts, and other specialists have been warning us, there are numerous differences. Government initiatives haven't done anything to address our real issues thus far. In fact, the administration requested a sizable release from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve back in November. But that attempt failed miserably because the supplies were long before depleted. They have been promising us that everything is temporary for more than a year. Basic necessities, housing, and transit costs are rapidly increasing. Americans now receive fewer goods than in the past. Food costs rose by another 7% last month, and they continue to rise each week. CNBC reports that cutting back on the regular intake of meat and dairy is one way Americans can deal with this. At the store, meat and dairy products are frequently the most expensive items. According to the study, eating less meat also reduces your environmental impact. Wolf Richer, a financial and economic specialist, warned that the Americans' purchasing power was set to decline even lower towards the end of January. Consumers' loss of purchasing power grew by 0.8% from December to January. As a result, Wages and salaries had less purchasing power. According to Richard's post on his blog, Wall Street, the purchasing power of $100 in January 2000 has decreased to $60.10, losing an additional 50 cents in the last 30 days. He continued, This is inflation burning out of control with the Fed the most careless Fed ever, still putting enormous amounts of fuel on the fire through its dangerously colossal balance sheet that it will unwind too late. Americans are growing increasingly enraged with the government, and many are losing faith in the nation's leaders. As a result, Biden's favorability ratings are declining across several states. According to a recent survey, over 6 out of 10 Americans disapprove of the way Joe Biden is conducting his presidency, with a majority of that group claiming that Biden has done absolutely nothing since taking office that they have approved of. 
to combat such ludicrous inflation levels, the Federal Reserve will be obliged to drastically raise interest rates. By doing this, it prevents an economic downturn but starts a financial crisis, which eventually leads to a recession. According to CME statistics, the likelihood of a 0.5 percentage point Fed rate increase increased to 44.3% after the date of release from 25% shortly before. The likelihood of a sixth quarter percentage point increase this year increased to around 63% from about 53% prior to the release. Since the Fed has been artificially keeping rates low for more than a decade, it is highly improbable that they will abandon their spending and printing binge and start tightening up too much. Financial markets are perfectly priced. Therefore, any unfavorable increase in interest rates will be quite painful. Investors will realize that the party is finally over when policy changes. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to turn the bell on to always get our latest notifications.